Hey, 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 we got a second special guest in the I row. know, we do. Antoine, Jolica Desroches, welcome to the break. Thanks for having me. Hey, First, we both completed Lake Placid last summer. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. You did okay. Yes, yeah, so I've been doing uh, triathlon for probably like 15 years. 15? Like half my okay. life has been doing triathlon. I used like double bachelor food science, nutrition science, then yep. a master in uh, sports science in uh, QTI. Yep. And then I'm doing sports science uh, PhD in uh, Chabot. So and, and wait, wait, you, you have time to, to do other stuff? <laughs> <laughs> you found, I don't know where, man, but you found time to write a book. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's called uh, Devenir Triathlete, so become Becoming a, Triathlete, yeah. yeah. So it's a uh, book, it just came out like one month ago, and it's more for people. So what is a, what would be an, an okay time in a, in a normal Ironman? Say we're doing the Ironman, you're coming out of the swim, and you're leaving for the bike. Like what, what would be oh a, God, a good sure. example of a good time? Oh, yeah. uh, what would be the number one advice you would give them that you probably provided in the book? But for a person to say, you know what, I, I'll buy that book to find out. Like in North Carolina, a small town, and like, oh, there's a marathon. That's like perfect. I'm training for an Ironman. This is going to be a good uh, tempo run. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, going back to the book, injury prevention. Burger salad, a tequila shot, and a okay. brown beer. Wow. Really? Yeah. Before the race. For We are having so much fun recording these podcasts and putting them out to the world. If you appreciate what we're doing here, the one free thing that you can do that will make a huge difference is hit that subscribe button. Good day, folks, and welcome to The Brick, where we secure your triathlon journey. I'm Dominic Double D. Deschain, and I'm with Coach Pierre Zvartman. Good day, Coach. Hey, hey, hey. We got a second special guest in the I row. I know, we do. It's like, a, it's like a winning streak. It, 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 it really is. Second in a row. That's I, pretty amazing. And not, not to take any way, anything away from Moose, but... It'll be I, a I lot feel, more interesting. I feel intimidated by our guest. Today. Really? I did not feel that huh. way with Moose uh, being our last <laughs> guest, but I do feel intimidated. And uh, Antoine, Jolica Desroches, welcome to the Hi. break. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for uh, joining us. You know, you and I have a lot in common, huh? Yeah? Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. We do. First, we both completed Lake Placid last summer. Yeah? Yep. 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 Yeah. You did okay. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to comment on your transition. Okay. You're not allowed oh. to speak up. <laughs> Where, I mean, I have, I have notes from the book, and he talks about transition. So he I, does. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I skipped that chapter on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so, Antoine, um, well known. You're in the pro series of Ironman. So, you do a lot of 70.3s, do a lot of full Ironman, full distance uh, events. Um, also, an ultra marathon runner. And uh, you like extreme sports as well that's what i've, I've been told I mean, yeah i like long stuff you the like longer long the stuff. better so yeah yeah a real and tell, tell us a, a little bit about you uh Antoine. yeah so i've been doing uh triathlon for probably like 15 years 15? like half my okay. life has been doing triathlon mm -hmm. i used to be a cross-country skier okay so i always competed in endurance sport uh and now for like the past eight or nine years almost 10 years i think i've been racing as a pro and right now I do 70.3 in Ironman, but my focus, big focus is on Ironman. And since the last few years, I've dabbled in uh, ultra running and that's like a new passion for me. So I try to wow. do a little bit of both in this, during my competition season and also find a passion for gravel cycling too. Uh, so I like, I like endurance stuff. Very nice. Spending time outside, yeah. And you're in parallel, you're completing, you com recently completed two majors, one in food, uh, in, in, let me just get my notes here, make sure I get this right, food science and nutrition science. Yeah. And now you're in the process of completing a PhD in sports science. Yeah, so I do, did a like double bachelor, food science, nutrition science, then a yep. master in uh, sports science in uh, UQTI, and yep. then I'm doing sports science uh, PhD in uh, Sherbrooke. So and, there, and wait, wait, you, you have time to, to do other stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my life is pretty much like work, study, and uh, like not much else happening in my life except then training and uh, 
and uh, my PhD. Oh, and stuff, yeah. Okay, pretty so busy. Yeah. I I picked this uh, baseball cap on purpose just for you, Antoine. I hope you realize how privileged you are having the Oakland A's baseball cap with you today. This is the official on-field baseball cap, by the way. Just so you know, <laughs> you should go. Oh, Ooh. thank you. Ooh. And because of the science that the Oakland A's brought into baseball, yeah. Have you seen the? Uh, of course, money, I, Moneyball the, is one of my movie favorite Moneyball? movies. Yeah, it's a really good movie. So it's yeah. all numbers based, algorithm yeah. and stats and. So do science. you eat sunflower seeds? Yes, I do. You do? Can of you course. do like the? I can do eat the sunflowers and I can then spit it out. I can put a bunch in my mouth and really? just go. Yeah, that's a skill. I twisted my ankle. Once you know why you can do that? Seeds. Because baseball is so boring <laughs> that all you do is sit in a dugout and y'all, you, you, you know, you're just eating sunflower seeds all day. So that being said, so we're back to our guest. Thank you for being. You see, otherwise I have to put up with this type of comments, you know, throughout yeah. the entire episode. So thank you for being here, Antoine. So what was your last race? What was your last uh, your last event? Uh, yeah, Antoine? race uh, Saturday, like a few days so ago. They, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventy point three Saint George. George, which yep. is uh, now part of the new Pro Series, and also it's a North American Championship. So it was a big, big race, yeah. uh, like big field. I think we're we're supposed to be 80 male pros, but I think we we're like 55 or something like that. So big, big field and like yeah, yeah. I I had to decline last Friday. <laughs> but I couldn't that's make why. it. So that, 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 that was oh, one bravo, the bravo. 30 <laughs> that didn't show up. And on top of what you're doing, which requires a lot of time, it's a time-consuming sport. I mean, yeah, triathlon, yeah, yeah. it's time-consuming. Plus the studying part, you found, I don't know where, man, but you found time to write a book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's called uh, Devenir Triathlete, so become, Becoming yeah. Triathlete, yeah. yeah. So it's a uh, book. It just came out like one month ago, and it's more for people who want to do their first triathlon or people who have done one or two triathlon and just want to expand their knowledge and get better at triathlon. So like I've been doing triathlon for so long and I feel like I've wearing like wearing a few ads, like there's the coach part, the athlete part, and also my sports science uh, research part. So like I try to combine everything in this uh, in this book and I'm like really happy with the, the result. But like you said, it's uh, it was hard to find time to do everything. But I sort of managed to do it. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. I, when I prepped for this episode, uh, Antoine, you were some kind of in, an inspiration to me because I, I, I said, you know what, I'm probably going to be running out of time. And then I, I looked up your, you know, your, your credentials your yeah. and I said, man, the guy's racing on the pro series. He's studying for a PhD and he found time to write a book. I said, you know, shut up, double D and go do what you need to do. And that's it. Don't I, complain. So thank I you. Find, for, for I find that, that people who are really, really busy. <laughs> yeah. They, they get more done. They get more done and yep. they, they find like the, every little little bit of time you have off. He says, oh, I have a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. Do that. How long did it take you to write the book? Uh, in all, in all, all, like from the, deciding to write a book and the, till the publishing, how, yeah. how, what was that? Uh, I think it was like uh, one year and a half or maybe like 15 months or something okay. like that. I think like I had 11, 10 or 11 months to finish writing it. And then all the editing process takes okay. like quite a lot of time. And like it's basically it's the editing company that approached me to write the book. And I was trying to like convince them, well, maybe I can do it in two years or something, that, something like that. And they were like, I want it have it uh, published soon. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try to focus on that. But I think I like to have a, a deadline that okay. like yeah. that helps me to just go go all in and uh, focus on everything. So, so so, what is it like to write a book? Are you like in your bedroom at night and say, okay, chapter seven. And now what am I going to say? I'll talk about equipment. And then I go down with my piece of paper and I start writing. Like, how does it work? How do, how do you write a book? That's a serious question. Yeah, I'd yeah, love yeah. one day to write a book. I'm not sure about... Well, it would be on baseball for sure. <laughs> and it would, I would I'd probably get retired after that because it would become a bestseller very quickly. <laughs> for <right>? sure. <laughs> but how do you write a book? What was the process? Was it you coming up with your own content, giving it to someone like the raw material that you gave to someone and then they, they, they put it together for you? Was it an interview process and someone is writing up for you? Uh, how does yeah, that work? Yeah, I think the biggest part was to like... Uh, I have like a tab de matter, a, yeah. a table, table of content. Of content. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it needs to be like there's so many sections and subsections. So that's the biggest part. It's like once you have that figured out, yep. then it's super, well, not, not super easy, but like it's easy to say like if there's like a section in nutrition, but then you have all the thing I want to write about. Mm. The so then it's subjects, just like yeah. there's the 
in nutrition, there's a subsection about carbohydrate and then it's like what to eat in a race. So it's like, so then it's like, instead of thinking, oh, I need to write like 50,000 words at once. It's like just what well, I've had that small section that's maybe a thousand words or 2000 words. So it's okay. a lot easier to, mm. to process. And then once you're done with this, it puts, put it all together and then I send it to the editing, uh, and then the the biggest part was like try to make it more concise because I think I had, so it was supposed to be like fifty to sixty thousand words. I, I think I was over by twenty or thirty thousand oh, words. Really? Like a lot of so okay. like I've it's such a there's so many things you can talk about you had done. It's like just mm. it would be easy to do like that book could be at least like two three times bigger. But it's the important part, especially because it's for beginners, was to make it like small enough so that people who are kind of interesting in triathlon, but they don't know that it, they're going to be able to go through the book and like find it interesting and not get bored at, after one or two chapters. Mm. I found the, the I, I felt like I was reading or a coach was telling me a story on how to become a triathlete. I thought it was well-structured from a tailored guidance perspective, oh, like, nice. you know, giving you what you need, the basics you need, the equipment, how do you prep, how do you train, I thought it was a, a, a well-designed toolbox for proper guidance to become, you know, a triathlete or at least give it a shot. Or yeah, yeah, a yeah, try, yeah. Right? So, uh, well done. You, oh, you've read the book as well. Yeah, right, it was it was really an A to Z. So, you, it, you know, it, if, it is. If, I would, if I had written a triathlon book, it would have been written exactly that, that way. The, from Starting from, you know, an introduction to the triathlon, what are the distances? And then you went into different, like, why why you're doing triathlon, what's the aspects yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then you started, you, you delved into the science of it after that. And then everything was, you know, I, I found it, it, would, it followed a, a pattern that was easy to understand. And yep. you left the accessories, like the, the weight training and the nutrition more towards the end. Because yep. the first thing is to be able to swim the, bike the, and run. The basics, yeah. It yeah. really yeah. is. Yeah. That's My favorite part was transitions, <laughs> but but I Why? wasn't I Why wasn't that? I was wasn't it? in agreement with something. Okay? Oh really? Yeah, I have a I I'm gonna contest something because okay. so there you go. No, at one point because I now I understand it was for beginners. Hey, so for beginners, I'm I ready, understand. Coach. Yes, go ahead. Well, so he was talking about shorter distances, and in shorter distances, the idea is to have a faster transition. But if you must put socks on, then put your socks on. You know, it, it, it's it's not so bad. If it's a longer transition, then taking more time in the transition is fine, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what you're saying. So, what is a what would be an an okay time in a in a normal Ironman? Say we're doing the Ironman, you're coming out of the swim, and you're leaving for the bike. Like what? What would be oh um, God, a good sure. example of a good time? So you have a because most of the transitions are quite long. They're like yeah, four hundred yeah, yeah, to five hundred yeah. meters. And once you're on a bike, how much time do do you take? And what would be an okay time? Yeah, for an how much? I'd be curious. How much time do you take in your? I, I, yeah, how much time do you take? T one. Uh, well, I think the longest part. Like, if you take, for example, like seventy point three Tremblant, it's like the longest part of a triathlon. It's not like the transition part itself. It's just like going from the beach. To your bike yeah, exactly Get to but like the zone, yeah. once you're next to your bike it should be like under 20 30 seconds in my <laughs> yeah, you know it's like you need to get this quick. yes <laughs> yes justified that, especially the that first... long huh <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> really okay well you and i can chat offline afterwards i'll, I'll, I'll teach you how to make that three Even four faster. five seven yeah. minutes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like t2 like that's why like, you can take put your socks and everything and it depends on like how much time if you like if you're like a professional wanting to do your uh, like a marathon in 235 or something like that like we see some pros doing now it's like every like seconds count but like if you're doing it in like your marathon in like four or five hours spending like one or two minutes more in t2 but making sure that you get sunscreen that you get maybe a bit of food in t2 uh, socks so that you don't have blisters that's all time that's going to pay off for the marathon because like having a blister for a marathon can make, no better, yeah. make you take like, the extra 10 so seconds much to put yeah, the yeah, socks yeah. on yeah you talked about blisters but i mean for sprint so for me my frustration as a coach is when in the in a sprint triathlon or an olympic triathlon <laughs> and now i i've i've become accustomed to the fact that people want to put socks on but when I started triathlon, it was in 83. 
And in 83... Socks did not exist back well, then. Well, you folks. had socks, but <laughs> once people started not putting socks on and yeah. gaining time yeah. or losing time yeah. in the transition, uh, well, automatically they said, okay, I'm not going to put socks yeah. on anymore. You know? And even 70.3, I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of professional uh, triathletes that on 70.3 won't put socks on. Oh, really? So do yeah. you put socks on, Antoine, on 70.3? Yeah, right now, yeah. You like, do? it depends. Like, at first, I come from a, like, shorter distance. Like, I, yep. I've did, like, I2 races. So, okay. or you come out of, like, a big pack and then you're running. So, it's like, if you take time to put socks, you're going to lose a lot of time. So, nobody puts socks. So, the first 7.3 I did, I was like, I'm not going to put socks. Like, it doesn't make sense. But I think after a while, I realized it made sense uh, to put socks because blisters, you can make it so much yeah, because uh, it's a longer race. Yeah, it's a longer yeah, race, you yeah. know. And uh, even for my first Ironman or my first few Ironmans, I w instead of putting like easy laces, I would actually tie up my shoes because I felt like with easy laces, I would have blisters. And like mm -hmm. taking like the 10, 15 seconds to really tie up your shoes like perfectly, like sort of made sense. But now I'm like, well, I'm going to try to put the easy laces and save some time. It always depends on like where you are. Uh, compared to your competitors mm. even if it's a long race you w and you're finishing the bike with someone taking the 15 seconds more in the transition it means you need to run much faster the first few k's to catch up to the, that person yeah and if you can start with the same person with an advantage with your other competitors can make some sense so sometimes i would i always put socks in my t2 but like that's always like a decision that i could if i'm having a really good race and i know like uh the other carpenters maybe are not going to put socks. I'm not going to put the socks. Okay, and try to so you might decide. Like, so if you know, like the race is going well, really that's well. That's yeah. one of the advantages they have in the pro series because you know your your competitors, right? Yeah, you know like who's going to show it's up. It's not like a time trial. Yeah, yeah. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're, you're going for the difference uh, for pros and amateurs is pros are going for the ranking. They are. Uh, the time is important, but it's mostly the ranking. Okay. And yeah. uh, amateurs are going for the time. Yep. Yeah, so it's different. So going back to the book. So we have listeners and watchers which are amateur athletes or triathletes. Um, you refer to, you know, training efficiency or how to train effectively. You refer to equipment selection. You refer to how to prep, how to avoid injuries. So if you were to give them a, we're getting into the season. It's going to be starting anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on what you've written in your book, what would you tell our listeners or watchers what would be the number one advice you would give them that you probably provided in the book, but for a person to say, you know what, I'll buy that book to find out more. So what would be that one advice you would give our listeners or watchers uh, to get ready for that season that's about to start? Yeah, it depends. I think the biggest advice would be like, especially for someone who has never done a triathlon and wants yep. to get, like it can be so intimidating to go, to go into triathlon. It's like a big, Big sport is like there's three sports in triathlon three and yep. cycling is yep. such like a complicated sport, especially with the equipment. It can be like cost so much. Yep. And I think like, and then there's like so many type of training you can do. And like, I feel like a lot of people overthink about everything. You know, mm. it's like, I need to have the best, uh, the best shoes, the best watch, the best bikes. And my training needs to be the best possible. So then you overanalyze what you need to do. And that's the reason why a lot of people don't start training for something, especially in it's triathlon, but it's for any sports like marathon running and stuff. It's just by overanalyzing everything, by wanting to make it perfect, you don't do the first step, which is like just getting out of the door to, so to just train, you know? Go out there and, and do it and, and run and bike and swim. Yeah, and just buy my there. book first. Yeah, and yeah, then, well, there you then go. Train yeah. and then. <laughs> no, no, but I feel like it's like, I agree. Don't, you don't need to overanalyze like, it. Overanalyze. Yeah. You don't need to read all the all your book completely to just go try and, and see if you like it and then you you don't like you don't need to buy the most expensive bike just buy a basic bike then you see if you like it and then you do done a done a few triathlon and then oh maybe you'll upgrade but like you don't need everything to be perfect to to get into the sport yeah the one percent improvement the one percent improvement yeah. i mean exactly. i think if you there you, you have to start at the the basic part is your swimming your biking and your running yep so you do your one race, 
And then you realize, oh, I'm not that good in cycling. Maybe I could improve that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I can upgrade my equipment because I'm I'm at a point where the equipment seems to maybe be making a difference uh, with my competitors. Okay, uh, maybe I'll uh, uh, you know practice uh, more uh, transitions, practice more bricks and stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'll uh, delve into the science a little bit. But basically, you're swimming. You're cycling and you're running, and when I started triathlon, that's that's all that, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, there's the actually basics, was right? no science. Yep. You know, you had to get from one sport to the other as quickly as possible, and that was the goal. And I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, I think people overcomplicate it. They yeah, think about like, a bunch uh, of things. A lot of people focus on like the marginal gain, which is like the one percent, but like they neglect the ninety nine one percent, ninety nine yeah, percent of the chance. rest. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. if like if you're not sleeping well, if you're not eating well. I've be having like the arrow socks on the bike is not gonna make a difference. You know, it's like take care of the basic is the most important stuff. And yeah. then once you're like, okay, you focus on the the training, the nutrition, the sleep, uh, which is what a lot of people neglect. Then it's okay to like go try to find a little percentage, but it's like spending too much time of the marginal on the one percent but neglecting the 99 percent doesn't yeah. really make any sense well it's like having buying quick releases that are you know four grams or five grams or whatever they them but you know you got 10 pounds overweight i know yeah, well, yeah, you, yeah. you, lose, you could probably lose, lose like 10 pounds you lose 10 you, pounds you and then you five, just save five, geez, five right? thousand dollars yeah i know <laughs> so before we go back to the book uh, for a second i i, I want to hear your comments on injury prevention and uh, mental uh, readiness but before we go back there I listened to a podcast that you attended, Long Sortie, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe it was in April. And I want to make sure I, I captured this right. So you were on holidays last summer. You were out in somewhere in North Carolina, I believe. Uh, yeah, it was uh, I... last March. Okay, last, last March. March. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So it's it's even more fresh than, than I thought. So you were out in the ocean on a swim and then you came back to the beach and you saw that advertising on the marathon happening the next day or something like that. I said, well, oh, well, why do I, why, <laughs> why, why don't I register to this marathon? So you're not prep, you're not trained, Well, you, you are by default. You showed up to the registration desk. So you registered for that, that event and you ran the marathon in, I was a bit disappointed, though. It was um, <laughs> it was over two and a half hours. It was like two hours and 38 minutes. What happened, Antoine? Tell me, please. <laughs> it was two hours and 38 minutes. Is that it? Yeah, I don't know if, like, it, my watch, the Strava, <laughs> and the thing it says, like, between, like, 2.36 and 2.38 or something like that. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I was, like... I was training. I was. It's, uh, Man, that's impressive. Yeah. But I was never did in a uh, marathon alone. You know, not in okay. the Ironman. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I like, see. we we drove to get there to North Carolina, and like when we pass uh, New York City, I was like, oh, one day I want to do like a big marathon. In yeah, a, yeah. Just the marathon. Yeah, itself. in a Just race in a part. big city like this one. <laughs> and then I'm like in North Carolina, a small town, and like, oh, there's a marathon. That's like perfect. I'm training for an Ironman. It's just going to be a good uh, tempo run. <laughs> but uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really fun. Like at respect, first I was like, I need, I need to go. I, I had like a maximum speed. I, I allowed myself to go. Like I wanted, didn't want to go too fast. But then it felt good and I was like passing people and then I just got into the... I was wondering if you were injured or something. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Two hours and 30. What's your best uh, marathon time in an Ironman? In an Ironman. Uh, 2.49, like okay. 59, something like that. But it was in Lake Placid, which is super early. Wow. So uh, yeah, my goal is to see... Yeah, you did yeah. 8, uh, 8.24 in Lake Placid last year, which is pretty good. Yeah, Overall it's almost time. my fastest time. I think in Tremblant, I did 24. Okay. And like this, I think it was like between like 30 seconds difference between the, oh, really? the two. Wow. But I think Tremblant is a much faster course than oh, Lake yeah, Placid. Definitely. So, but I like a uh, hard course. Okay. Like for me, competing in like Ironman Texas... Would be fun just to have a good time, you know, but I much prefer and it's better for me to compete uh, somewhere like like Lake Placid or Tremblant where it's like rolling and like uh, you're not spending like four, four and a half or four hours on your just on your TT bars, like not going up. I, I like to go up hills and uh, suffer so a little Lake bit. So Lake Placid yeah. was a perfect, perfect course race. for you. And especially you're, on the run, I like hills And your too, bike yeah. was good. 4.37, I believe, in Lake Placid. That's what I have here in my That's notes. Fantastic. Which is pretty good, no? 
Yeah, I think time. like 423 or something. Oh, I don't know. Well, uh, you may uh, want to look at Strava uh, yeah, and Garmin. Uh, something yeah. is, uh, I got 437. Oh, here. maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll so see. what's going on? Were you in? <laughs> yeah, what's happening? So Antoine, you and I will chat yeah, after. Yeah, we'll chat. And swimming remains your number one sport, right? It, it's still your strength. Is it your, your, yeah, I your think strong it used uh, to be like there used to be? there used to be like a big difference between like my strength was swimming and then it was cycling and then it was running. Okay. Now maybe my swimming is a little bit less good than it was, but my, at least my running has improved a lot. I think it's since COVID. Like I was like, well, there wasn't anything we could do and I wanted to improve my weakness was running. And then there was no races in 2020. So I registered for a ultra race, a mm-hmm. EDK. So I spent like all year, all summer, just training a lot running and I think it helped me to improve a lot. And also mentally, like having done like a super long race, when you do twice as much as a marathon, when once you come to the marathon part of the Ironman, it's it doesn't interval. seem that <laughs> much. Like mentally, it's a big plus to have done longer races because I'm see. like, I know I can do it. Yep. It's just a matter of how fast I can try to push myself. So, and now I think my bike has maybe, like it's always a gamble of like, you need to try to have... All the three disciplines, well, all three like perfect, disciplines at the it's... top, but you you just can't because you you. So do you vary your approach depending on how you feel that year? As an example, you feel that your running needs improvement, so you'll give it more attention during your yeah. Training? Like is that how like you're, Saturday, you're like my bike wasn't yeah. going well, and you okay. had yep had to improve. And my next race is coming really soon on uh, less than two weeks. Okay. So right now we're focusing a lot on the the cycling just to. Well, you're not going to improve a lot like physio- physiologically in two weeks, but just by doing more specific work, you get your, your legs to train or better at going at that speed, you know? Mm-hmm. So just doing more specific work at half Ironman space, uh, okay. pace. So yeah, I think it's uh, just, you need to figure out like, I think I'll, before I was spending too much time swimming, mm. I was swimming with the university swimming team. So it's like you're swimming a lot, which I, I like to swim with fast people. But like if you're swimming with people or only swimming, the workouts are going to be super hard. So then once you're done mm. with that workout, uh, like they're done with their day or they're going to swim another. T- but As opposed uh, to us, you, we have to bike and run. No, so it's it, like yeah. my biking and my running training were suffer. suffering because I was mm. too tired from so now I'm swimming uh, alone, well, with friends at uh, like free swim, a bain libre. Okay. Yep. And then like it's a lot less taxing. Instead of doing like uh, over 90 minutes, like sometimes two hours, I'm doing usually like 75 minutes. So I'm feeling a lot fresher so I can put more time on my mm. sw- uh, biking and running. So I think before I was putting too much time on my strength but not enough time on my weaknesses. And I am trying to put more time in my weaknesses. And like the cycling is the longest part of an well, Ironman. So yeah. it's, you need to spend a lot of time. I think cycling. that's really interesting because one of the things that uh, I've, I tell the amateur athletes is that it's a sport of compromise. Okay, so triathlon is a sport of compromise. If you put a lot of time in one thing, then you're going to have to compromise in something yeah. else because you have a limited amount of time. Um, people tend to go towards their strengths. Because say your strength is running, it's a huge advantage to be a strong runner in triathlon. But if your strength is running and you're only running and you're ne- neglecting cycling or, or, yeah. or swimming, it's going to make a difference. It's going to impact your running. The other thing you said was really interesting is that it happened to be that because of COVID, he couldn't swim as much. And then you all of a sudden were running a lot. And then there was an improvement in running yeah, that yeah. happened. Um, I think that's a that's something that amateurs have to learn is that sometimes you can spend a season, a whole season, working on one of your weaknesses or or trying to strengthen something that has has been a weakness for a while, even if you're going to compromise a little bit with the two other sports, because the gains you'll get will be interesting. And plus, I think you gain confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, you know that you're going to get off the bike because you've improved your run. He says, I know I can run now because I'm a better yeah. runner than I was before. I think that's really interesting. I think that's something that that uh, that amateurs can really learn from pro triathletes. Yeah, like a good example is like Craig Alexander back in the day racing with Maka, like Chris mm-hmm. McCormack. Like uh, Craig Alexander was like the best runner, but his weakness was the bike. And then like one year, he just decided to put a lot of time on his cycling. He also put more focus on his like uh, aerodynamics. And then the next year, 
he was a lot faster on the bike, was able to be competitive on the bike. Mm. But he was still as strong on the run, you know? He didn't, and like, he didn't lose that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. especially if, like, if you're spending more time training on the bike, the cycling seems less hard. So, like, because a lot of runners, good runners, are not going to be run as well after cycling. Mm. But if your cycling has improved, the 180K on the bike doesn't fatigue your leg as much and you're able to run to your potential. So sometimes the best thing to improve your marathon is actually spending more time cycling because you're going to feel like oh, that's you're going to be fresher. Yeah, you're going to be fresher. <laughs> yeah. That happened fresher. one year. Uh, the World Championships was in Tremblant and uh, 70.3 was one, one of the first years, like 2014 or something okay. like that. Okay. And, and it was in September. It was a September race. I don't know if you were there. But uh, there was a lot of drafting that time. Now, the bike was super fast. Okay. And then everybody says, oh, but people are biking really fast. They're going to uh, run slow. And no, the runs were faster than ever. But because there was a lot of drafting, there was not a lot of officials, people got mm. off the bike super fresh mm. and yeah. they were running really, really well. So that's really interesting. Who's your number one competitor on the, uh, on the Pro Series though, in Ironman? Who do you look for when you show up, you register to an event? You want this guy to be there because you're going to beat, beat him up. You want to kick his ass. Là. Who's, <laughs> that, who's that one guy? Là? Uh, we won't. We won't. Men, we'll we'll beep it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, when we do <laughs> in twenty point trees, like I don't know. There's like it's been such a long time since like this last year, last race I did was like the last, the previous twenty point three I did was like five years ago, I think. Okay, okay. So it's been a while. So I don't know that much about like the twenty point three guys. But mm. in the in the full distance, there was like. Well, it's like, sort of like when you're Canadian, you want to beat all the other <laughs> Canadian, you know, uh, like. Cody Bills, I was able to beat him in last year in Lake Placid, but he didn't have a good race. But like, because I beat him, I, next year, next race I want to do, I still want to beat him. But okay. like, I know he's like he's super strong. There, there's a lot of guys that are super strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I feel like there's a bit more competitive competitiveness between like the for me like being a Quebecois, you know, I want mm. to beat the Ontarian <laughs> or the other Canadian, you know, show that like Quebec we can be good at. So message to Cody Beal. <laughs> Now that Antoine has spent time with Coach Pierre and Double D, you better watch out, man. <laughs> better watch out. <laughs> um, going back to the book, Injury Prevention. So it, especially, and that chapter really got my attention because when you're over 50, you get to a point where that's what you're trying to avoid. You got to be careful, pay attention to your body. So What could you, what, yeah, there don't, you go. Don't fall off your bike. Yeah, if you get, as Personal. you get closer to 60, you got to be even more careful. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. No. But I mean, injury <laughs> prevention, tell, tell us a little bit more about this injury prevention piece. Like, what do you do to maintain and stay away from injuries? And what would you tell our, our listeners or watchers around injury prevention? Yeah, I think one big part is uh, prehab versus rehab. You know, it's like, Going to the physio like that. before like you're that. injured instead of going to the physio while you're injured, you know? Uh, it's like, because you're going to spend a lot of less time going to the physio. It's just to, it's basically to make sure that, like, your body is okay before the season so that you're, you don't have, you're not stronger maybe, like, in the quad, but weaker in the hamstring or stuff like that, or you, you don't have any stiffness. So it's a lot easier for, for yourself, for the physio, to prevent an injury by tweaking your body or giving exercise to make sure that everything is okay. So I like that prehab rehab yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great. I like that. And like, I like that. We usually wait too much yep. before. Yep. Uh, well, everybody uh, goes after they're injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important to like take mm. care of your body before and uh, especially also with your with your training if like your coach gives you a training mm. but you feel like a niggle in your in your legs or something like that. Uh To be like confident enough to tweak your training, maybe skip a run or reduce the length of your run, yep. so that you're mm -hmm. gonna instead of like skipping like three weeks of training because you you've tried to push to an injury, you're maybe gonna skip one one or two training, uh, yeah, then, then you're, you're gonna, gonna recover gonna and long term you're gonna save a lot of lot of time, lot of training sessions. So And this is something you do regularly with athletes, though. So well, there's something that I tell athletes that. Yep. That, that experienced athletes do yep. is that they, they'll, they won't be scared of taking a day or two off because they feel like something's 
that something's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of waiting, 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 and pushing, and pushing, and pushing. So there's a difference between saying, okay, I'm way too injured. Now I have to take three weeks, like yeah, you yeah, said. Yeah. Or I just feel like uh, something in my hamstring. I'll just take a day off or I'll swim. I'll, I'll, I'll just go for a swim or just go for an easy run, see how it goes, see, take a couple of days, and then get back to the training. But I think it's hard for triathletes. Like triathletes are like perfectionists. We want to mm. do everything perfect. And like, if you're like, uh, personally myself with my train, uh, with my athletes, I use training peaks. So I can see that the, the athletes I coach who, who are perfectionists because that's the type of guys and girls who want every training to be green. Green, to be, you know? green, to show up as and green. And they're like, it needs to be perfect. <laughs> uh, Everybody works, listening yeah. to this understands that. Yeah, I, want, I, 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 I have red in my training peaks. What should I do? I said, well, delete it. <laughs> and they go... <laughs> That's can, the first feature isn't that I cheating? In well, peaks. at least it won't be green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It won't be red. Right, there you go. Yeah, and so, that's that can be a good thing, you know, because it's like yeah. that's uh, something that push you to go through all the training. And, but it can also be a bad thing because that's gonna push you to go through a training that you should have skipped because either you were sick or you were injured or yep. yeah. yeah. So for the people out there, remember that prehab instead of rehab. Uh, tagline i i like that I think you see it's i think i has there any has there ever been uh like a um an ex, uh, experiment done where you're spending your money pre versus somebody who spends oh, his money after if it's cost <laughs> oh yeah i think yeah it should, should be like it's just economically it, you save a lot of money but i don't think that i haven't seen a study yeah anymore. because I, you would save probably by doing it pre- i don't know i mean nobody does that no, i mean nobody does that no. go before do prevention and stuff like that amateurs don't do that you wait you wait you wait yeah. because it's time consuming yeah because going to a physio it is time consuming but it's it even more can- time consuming when you're injured because yeah. then it's like you have an injury <laughs> and then you instead of going once per month or once per two months to do the physio just to make sure everything is okay. Now yeah. you're like there every week, you know, because yeah. you're like, I need to make sure my my rehab is going okay. Mm. So a long time you're spending more more money, more time, but it's like, it's just, it just needs to be a switch. In your... You talked about weight training in the, in the book. Um, uh, I really, I really prone, I, I want athletes to do weight train. Um, I used to coach high level swimmers and, uh, you know, we, we started weight, weight training in the, you know, middle seventies, early eighties with, uh, with swimmers. And, um, we would train weights pretty much all season, but we would reduce, uh, a little bit of weight training yeah. during the, uh, specific part. Um, now we have amateur athletes. I coach the average age is 46 years old. Oh, wow. And one of the number one questions I get is, first of all, they do want to do weight training because they feel the difference. But the other question is, how much weight training should I continue doing during the season or if I should stop? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm sometimes it's like uh, do do as I say, not, not uh, was that what I do. It's like when you're like lacking time, sometimes I'm always going to, if there's a training, I'm going to. I have to skip is usually going to be to the gym because mm-hmm. like, I don't want to skip a uh, run training or a bike training, but I'm okay like skipping a uh, gym workout even though I know gym workouts are really important. I, but regarding like reducing, I think you should keep the same amount of, like if you're uh, doing twice uh, gym training in the winter, you should also do twice in the, the summer while you're racing, but it's the length of the training and it's the... Mm the like the charge like the difficulty of the the training the session, intensity the intensity yeah it's like you do the same exercises but with less weight yeah 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 or less, uh, less or a lower series. percentage of your like ah, one rm okay. you know okay so you're still uh like you're not gonna do like uh rep until you're like max you know max rep mm-hmm. just a few like the week before your big race but to do it at like 70% or 60% of your max rep and a lower amount of rep. So you know you could go push, do your squats a lot with more weights and a, a few more rep, but you're just keeping it like safe. That makes sure you, you get the benefit of the strength training, mm-hmm. but you're not pushing your body too much. And the, the hard part is you want to make sure that your strength training is beneficial, but it doesn't uh, affect your other training. And that's the art part is to make sure it's at the right time of the in your calendar mm. in your your week when you're planning your workout but i feel like sometime just doing it it's weird but just doing it before i 
hard workout, like a hard uh, track workout in the same day, sometimes works, works well. I feel like the, the best timing is either like just before hard workout on the track or the same day that you do, uh, your long run. Oh, because if you do like a long run, like, uh, your your body is already tired and like there's not that much benefits to add more like endurance training in the same day mm -hmm. but adding strength is uh, like a big plus and you make sure that like everything wow, is, is okay and that you're not okay. taxing again like twice in the same day the same type of uh, oh, yeah, physiology okay. yeah you're not taxing muscles in uh, in the, the same, same way, way really. the same yeah. way yeah. yeah all right so time flies we're getting close to the end um mentally like the mental readiness, the mental preparation. Like you've been in the pro series for, why did you switch to pro, by the way? What, what, uh, what, what was the rationale in making that decision to yeah, switch Yeah, I've done to pro? once, uh, one uh, 7.3 as an amateur. Yeah. And I think I was like one spot away from getting money if I was racing as a pro. So I'm like, okay, so I know. that was the trigger. I know I can make it. And I like, because I had to choose like uh, yep. the first, the, the one race I did was uh, 7.3 Muskoka in Ontario. Okay. And I was like, either I take my uh, my qualification to go to the world championship as an amateur, or next year I race as a pro. And I was like, what's going to challenge me the most to to improve the most? And it was like racing as a pro. So, and I, for me, uh, yeah, I just like to push myself and like that. But well, mentally, was... mentally, how do you prep? Like you know, you're going into a big race with one uh, with with Cody Beal that's <laughs> going to be there, and you're going to be racing. You're ready. You feel great physically, but then mentally, how do you prep? How do you, man, I'm ready. I'm, I'm just going to kick it and, and make it happen and be at the top of my discipline, my sport. So how do you prep? How do you rally up, like talk to yourself yeah. and, and make I'm curious to see what goes into your head when you prep for a great event. Yeah, one of the things like I talk in the book, it's like your, your stress level is like a knob of the volume. Yeah. It's like, uh, and it's like a, when you see it's like a U curve, like inverse U curve. Yeah. So you don't want to be too relaxed. So like you don't care and like you're almost like, oh, it's uh, whatever, you know. Uh, you don't want to be too stressed out. Like the other point of the curve is like you're so stressed out that your muscles are not performing optimally. Like you don't want to be like on the, on the start and like you're, you're shaking or your muscles are too tense. You just want to be like you're excited. So you want to compete. You're a little bit stressed, but not too, too stressed. So you need to find ways, you need to know yourself and like what's going to make sure, if you're like, you realize in the morning you're too relaxed. And I think that's what my, was my problem in my last race I did. I was, uh, I, I pushed it to, I was scared of being too stressed and then I end up being too relaxed. And in the morning <laughs> of the race, I was too, oh, whatever happens, you know, I was like, wasn't, I needed that yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. So you need to know like, what maybe listen to some music to either pump you up or relax you down. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes if you're too stressed, it's just having some like uh, deep breathing exercise. So then what's that song that you listen to that, that what's the music? you up? Yeah, well, yeah, I'll, I think, I'll add uh, it to my playlist. So what's that song? Uh, I like like about? rap songs, and but I, I like it. I want a it, name, uh, title, the, title. Well, what I was last race I listened to the the, the choice I was this uh, song I was listening to is uh, Jewel. It's a is a French rapper. Okay, and it's like it's it's motivating, but it also I find it a bit funny as a type of music. So it <laughs> relaxes me at the same time. Okay. So it's both at the same time. So it's well. enough to crank it just, up your, like, I feel your like stress it's a level yeah. a bit. Yeah. It's, it's like a intense. Red Bull vodka. Red Bull <laughs> yeah, vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so your greatest race memory, what is it? Um, I think the most fun one was uh, Canada Man. Oh, was it? Which yeah. you ended up beating. The, you did the course record uh, in yeah. 2022, right? It was fun because it's, it's been like such a long time uh, since I raced. Yep. Uh, it was like racing at home. And the, the cool part is like your, you, the crew is a big part of the race. So I had my friend and my parents who were giving me uh, my, my gels, my bottles on the bike. And... Think like about like the transition. Don't want to lack uh, lose any time. My like everything was like timed perfectly. We, we didn't lose any any time on any like feeding stuff. And like my friend was, he uh, was cycling with me for most part of the marathon. And then you had to have a crew, so he was running with me uh, and just crossing the line like everybody together. It was super super fun experience, and it was different than. Uh, 
than an Iron Man where there's more s stress. It's like I feel like it was a race that I was like always in uh, in control, nice. but I was pushing myself to to the limit, mm. and it was just a race that like everything was going. Uh, Perfectly, except the one part was like uh, at one time on the bike I got uh, I had to stop because a train passed, so I waited for <laughs> almost like 15 minutes for the train to pass. But wow. except like physically, like everything was it was that was in, good. in 2022 that the train uh, passed. Uh, or yeah, like 2022. Yeah, yeah. But you still ended up beating the the course record, even though you uh, yeah, waited but, 15 but minutes. At the end, for the they, <laughs> they take took out oh, the they, 15. Yeah, yeah, but, they, yeah. They, they subtract really? that from your. That's yeah. the hardest bike. Of any, oh, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's such right? a hard. Bike. The the last hill is course. like it's crazy. It's I did crazy hill. But in the car, the the day before, I was like, it's nothing. Like when you see it, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah. But when you're riding it, especially at the end of the bike, it's so. I have so a question hard. on the bike at the end. Did you zigzag, or did you go straight? I zigzag. I talked to Lynn Besset. We who yeah. run the the race like many times. She was like. It's better to zigzag. Like it's gonna, yeah. you're gonna take maybe less, more time, but it's you're gonna spin your legs. Yeah, and it's gonna be better for the marathon. See, so that's what I do. That's yeah. something that people think is a is like a, a handicap or as a weakness. A, as a, yeah, yeah, because sometimes the the it's so it's so like you know you have it like a 14 degrees, 15 degrees, which is incredibly yeah, hard. Yeah, we call this in If you zigzag, yeah. your 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 legs will actually spin more. Yeah. It'll take a, a, maybe a little bit more time, but so le so much less taxing. And after that, you have to run, you know? Yeah. So, it's yeah. sort of wow. like if you're in Europe and you've got the S on the yep. big... Like sure. If you take the shorter part, it's going to be a lot steeper, but you're yeah. going to have to bike less distance. But if you take the longest part, you're going to be able to go faster. Yeah. It's gonna cov you're going to cover more distance, but it's going to be quicker. So you need to find like the... The, the, sweet nice, the sweet spot, yeah. Yeah, okay, very so interesting. Antoine, you're our second guest, right, to the brick. And thank you, by the way, for uh, being with us today. So our number one guest, Mark Van Ort, who you know, is uh, the, the lead organizer of the Epic Trial. Yeah, which nice, done really in, nice race, uh, yeah. Three years ago. Mark left, off, left us with a question for you. And I'll be asking you the same thing before you leave us today. Come up with a question for our next guest. We don't know who that person will be, but we're still going to ask the question yeah, yeah. on your behalf. So Mark's question to you was what other sports have you practiced in your life that's outside of triathlon endurance sports and is it more cultural or entertainment type sports and cultural being it comes from your roots it comes from your community your province your country whatever or is it more entertainment like coach pierre does surfing that's more of an, an a sports it's more entertaining yeah, you don't Not do for biking. The next 10 I know, weeks. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so, which what sport did you practice that's uh, outside of uh, triathlon and endurance sports? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, when I was young, I did like all the sports. Like, uh, yep. The biggest sport I In played most, including was, baseball. I tried baseball. I was so bad. Like, I was super young. Like the. <laughs> Yeah, I was really, really bad. You, so. you look like you have a great potential for baseball. So I, I wouldn't <laughs> mind coaching you, Antoine. If you need help, I can, okay, I can yeah. give you a hand with this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did soccer a long, long time. But like every, everything that's like required like coordination, I'm yep. really, really bad. Okay. So I'm better at sports that need to, you need to run. But yep. one sport I, I started back doing is uh, tennis. Okay. Which is fine. I uh, do it with my girlfriend. It's like one sport we can do together, which is fun. And it's, it's nice to do something outside of, of triathlon. And there's like a tennis court uh, close to our, Where our place. So it's like we try once a week to play tennis. We don't usually do it once a week, but like it's like our, our goal to do Do you this find it complementary to a triathlon to a certain extent? Like mentally, physically, coordination-wide? Uh, it, does it complement anything in the triathlon Maybe just the best part, I feel, is just like to do something that's completely outside of triathlon. It's, it's yep. like doing, I do like gravel cycling, which is, which is fun, but it's still cycling, you know? It I is, do like yeah. traveling, but it's still running. Now it's like, it couldn't be more different than triathlon. So it's mm. nice to do something and not think about anything else. And yep. if you want to be able to, to smash the ball, you need to focus on something. Yeah. And for me, I'm like ADD. I think about a lot of time, a lot of things. So it's, it's nice to have a, a type of sport that you really need to focus on something specifically and don't think about other stuff. It's right? really interesting to be able to do something where you're, you're not thinking about your job and you're like a bit of your job is, is doing triathlon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, so, really is. Good point. Uh, you know, golf does that for me. So when I play golf, I, I like to play well. 
So, you know, uh, when you're focusing on the ball and doing a good shot, your mind just goes towards that. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. Not focusing about on looking things. for my yeah. ball in the woods, right? Yeah, that happens <laughs> a lot. Used to it, yeah. <laughs> Whereas I feel like running, it's good like to like solve problems and think about stuff. Yeah. It's good for that. But you're, you're able to think about other, other stuff. So you can think about stressful stuff. But yeah. sports like golf or tennis is like you need to think about the ball. Yeah, about about what you're thinking. doing there. Yeah. Uh, what kind of sport? Is there a sport where you would like to do? Like later. Oh, good question. Something that you would like to do later. Uh, yeah, my next... Baseball. Well, after it, like baseball. triathlon. <laughs> yeah, no, no baseball. I <laughs> don't like baseball at all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think it would be like... I want to be... I've tried a few triathlon... Uh, uh, trail running race. Okay. And I want... Once I'm... When I'm still like competitive in endurance sport, I want to try to do a few high-level trail running race to see how I can compete at like big level okay but like when i'm like super young i don't know i think mm. i want to do like what i what i like and stuff that are like just different and what i feel like, like you you, you talked about ultra running what's the longest ultra run you've done i did it once in uh, in february but i had covid like the two weeks before so i was really bad uh, it was a 100k okay but i feel like it was more like a hike than a run because i hike Well, I was I walk almost all of the like 50k of the race. Okay, it was super super long. So like I want to go back to that race and try to be competitive. Okay, and uh, I really like that sport. And I feel like, and I know a lot of ex triathletes who've come, uh, who are performing well in trail running right now. There's like Marianne Ogun, the yeah. she's a Quebecois. Yeah. Uh, there was like Ito Jackson who who won like like Placid and a few uh, Ironman races. Who's Competing really well, so I feel like our uh, triathletes are a good type of athlete who can perform well in trail running. So yeah. I want to try to give it a shot. There. Well, it's it's um, usually you've spent all your whole life doing three sports, and all of a sudden you're doing one sport. Yeah, and you know you're concentrating all on that time, and and you realize that, and it and the and the watch is a lot less important. Yeah, that's what running. I like. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's so also the, what I like about Canada, man. It's like usually I, I want to like everything is time and like I mm. need I know my swim time, my bike time, and my running time. But Canada, man, or any like trail running races, like you really don't care about your your watch. It's just like you go as fast as you can, but like you're going to run into mud and rocks and stuff. So. Oh. That's great. That's great. So while I get you to think about that question you're, you're going to be asking our next, next guest, guest, I just want to remind our watchers, listeners, that book from Antoine Jolicoeur des Roches, Devenir Triathlete, How to Become a Triathlete, uh, a step-by-step -step guide, tailored guidance, everything is covered in there. Mm. Uh, great book. Um, go get it, folks. Actually, I, I bought the book and it's going to become a, like a reference. I think what's interesting is that sometimes you read a book and yep. you finished it and it's gone. Yep. Um, this, that, you can go keep back it, I agree. and say, keep uh, it's a toolbox. okay, well, what, he talked about weight training. Go yep. back to the weight training. He talked Agreed. about nutrition. Go back to weight training. Mm. I think it, it becomes like a little bit of like an encyclopedia yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of stuff. Um, it's interesting. And it, obviously, it's in French. And that's great because there is no Quebec... Uh, yeah, that, French that books in, uh, in yeah. France. No, yeah. Yeah, which is great. Good job, man. Uh, Thank you. Know, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Great job. So, yeah. questions for yeah. our well, next guest. Well, since I really like nutrition and sport nutrition, I think it's going to be like a two part two part question. Is like, what is your uh, pre race meal? But also, what is your post race meal? Like, what's your cheat meal after a big triathlon or a big a big race? Uh -huh, okay, I like that. Very what's nice. Your, what's your post? Race yeah, meal? what's your? Uh, <laughs> what's yeah, your last race I did was a big burger with fries. Okay. Well, I'm vegan, so it was a vegan burger, but okay. it was like juicy and like lots of fries. And, yeah, <laughs> okay. it was good. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Me, it's always a beer. Like after yeah, the race, me it's always uh, a beer. Burger, yeah. fries yeah. with mayo on the side, and a beer. Yeah, but my yeah. pre race, my pre race is a burger and, and, is and it? salad. Really? Yeah, burger no. and salad. Yeah, that's my pre race. Really, burger, salad, a tequila shot, and a okay. brown beer. Wow! Really? Yeah. Before the race, for for years and years and years, oh. my my pre race meal was that a tequila <laughs> shot and a brown beer. Well, speaking of which, uh, John, hey, chin chin. Antoine, I thank wish you very you, much. Thank you yeah, for chin. being with us. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. It's been a great. Uh, Cheers, to everybody. Great to have you at the break, folks. Uh, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care of yourself and. Stay